super excited to announce our next speaker. She spoke here a few times. You guys probably know her. She's a real firecracker. Give it up for Nova Lee. Oh, Nova Lee. Hey, Google. Can men have a baby? On the website Healthline.com, they say, yes, it's possible for men to become pregnant and give birth to children of their own. It is easier to fool people than to convince them that they have been fooled. It is great to see all my fellow patriots gathered here today that have not been fooled. Now, I was going to open with the easy crowd please drum. Let's go, Brandon, but my mom told me not to. Let's go, Brandon. Hi, my name is Nova Lee. I am a rebel, a renegade, a rule breaker, a freedom fighter. I am unliked and I, <laughs> I am unliked and I am okay with that. I am hated because I question tyranny and I do not comply. Freedom of speech and thought is being massacred. We all know there are only two genders, and we know men cannot have babies. <laughs> but we are being brainwashed to believe you choose your gender. In third grade, I had friends telling me they were bisexual, pansexual, cisgender, bi-gender. I was eight. I had no idea what they were talking about. Now I know because people won't stop talking about it, as if their sexuality and gender is one of their virtues. If the most interesting thing about you is your sexuality, you need a hobby. family. I believe it is hard work and determination that makes you succeed, and failure makes you learn. Society is grooming wimps, wimps that cannot stand up for themselves. When things get hard or unfair, they go tell an adult to make it fair. I have a fun fact for you. Participation awards are not awards. You did not win. I was at gym class playing kickball. We all had to race in line to see who would kick first. Me and my friend made it there first. The teacher said, No, believe you need to move to the back of the line so the other kids can go first. They are not as fast as you and haven't gotten to kick yet. No, I won. won. That sounds more like a them problem and less like a me problem. If getting to the... If getting to the line first was just so important to them, they should have tried harder. Maybe after school they can jog or do jumping jacks and make themselves faster like I do. The, the teacher replied, Are you always this mean, Nobly? Do you even care about anyone? And she told the principal on me. I was not wrong. I don't believe in equity. They had the equal opportunity to get there first. I was just faster. Not sorry. Being competitive is how we create strong leaders, inventors, risk takers. Stop making wimps. I do not I, I do not have white privilege and I am not a racist. Although, while door knocking for my Lakeville School Board candidate, Cynthia Schmitz, I have run into some, well, we'll just call them interesting people. When I knock on a door, I only ask two questions. One, are you planning on voting November 2nd? Two, what are your values you look for in a candidate? The lady that answered this particular door said, white privilege. I said, well, Cynthia's not really for that. She got down to my face, pointed her finger, and said, you have white privilege. And if you do not admit to your privilege, you are a racist. I was stunned. I replied, you realize how rude that statement is, don't you? If I have white privilege, what are you saying my friend has? Keep in mind, I was door knocking with Cinta's older, oldest daughter, and she is biracial. The woman turned to Cinta's daughter, got in her face, pointed at me, and said, she has white privilege, and you live in Minneapolis because you are black. Again, I was stunned. Clearly, she drank the wrong Kool-Aid. This, this exchange went on for a while until I realized she truly was a brainwashed Democrat. I ripped the Cinta flyer out of her hand and yelled at her. I will not waste one of these 
fires on you, you are not worth it, and stormed away. Don't worry, we looked her up. She's a professor of the, at the U, U of M. <laughs> Do you know why I have so much courage to fight the reign of terror? I believe in America, and I believe that we the people hold the power of our freedom. I am part of we the people. That makes it my duty, as well as every single American, to keep our freedom. Charlie Kirk said there are two ways a society is built, by force or by speech. China, Venezuela, Russia, all by force. America, by speech. We choose our representatives by listening to their ideas. Elect them to follow through. This is how we are able to have the American dream, because we all have the equal opportunity to succeed. The first time I ever spoke in pub public was about a year ago at my district town hall with House Rep John Kosnick and Senator Zach Duckworth. I demanded to know what they were going to do about the ridiculous masks and CRT entering my school. They had no solutions. I respect both of them very, very much. However, it made me realize it is not our government that needs to make the change. It is we the people that have to, the right to alter or abolish a government that becomes destructive. We, the people, have the power to stop special interests that have gained control of the government. Our government leaders are the instruments elected by us to follow our decided rule. Our rights come from God, not from the government. How can people still not see this? Well, if they can't, it is our job to wake them up because we are all in this together. The pandemic is a fear-based tyranny to teach us to hate each other, dividing us by the color of our skin, further by masked versus unmasked, vaccinated versus unvaccinated. I was watching a town hall that House Rep Eric Morrison put together with nurses from Minnesota. The nurses that are vaccinated get a special sticker to wear, and the unvaccinated are bullied, isolated, and made to sit at separate lunch tables, stand on opposite side of the rooms. They are humiliated. Last year's heroes are now demonized. It seems to me that if we cower and hide in fear as a divided, terrified nation, begging the government to just let us go back to life, we will lose what America is. The breath of America is the people. It is all of us. We are all bonded in life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. What we need to realize is that we are in control of our lives. When chaos ensues, we cannot and should not look for government to save us. We don't need saving. Once you start giving into fear, giving up your freedom of choice, speech, and thoughts because you want to save, nerf life, you are not free. What is next? Do I have to pass a mental health exam before I go into a movie theater to make sure I won't start a fire? Do I have to be screened for anger issues before I'm allowed in school because I might punch someone in the face or yell out in anger? Will my genes be tested to determine if I'm allowed to have a baby? Where does it end? It does not end if we do not stop this now. Freedom is over. <laughs> Freedom is always taken and never given. Atlas in Greek mythology was condemned for eternity to bear the world on his shoulders. A question was posed. If you saw Atlas, the giant who holds the world on his shoulders, blood running down his chest, his knees buckling, his arms trembling, but still trying to hold the world with the last of his strength, and the greater his effort, the heavier the world bore down upon his shoulders, what would you tell him? I don't know. What could he do? What would you say? I would tell him to shrug. Today is the day to come together as a community and a nation to shrug off the false idea of what America is. Shrug off the tyranny, false idols, lies, and constraints. Now we need to wake fellow lions to rise up with us. We need to risk everything to take back our futures. Courage is contagious, so be courageous. So Noble League is amazing.